I think we can do better. Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic. As much fun as I had with Squeak at the last event, from those clips you just saw, uh, it's missing a vital component. It doesn't squeak when I hit things, at least in this current iteration. So, a little while back I did a CAD stream to try and fix this issue by effectively having the hammer hit flat and also having an extra gearing stage to speed the hammer back up again, thinking that if we hit flat and go faster, maybe we'll get more squeak. But as it turns out, that is a very... There are many different ways to skin a cat type problem, and I needed to basically sit down and work out or do some actual testing on the hammer arm to see if it was hitting flat and then also to see what we can do and how fast we need the hammer to go to actually get a squeak. So I've designed up a little test jig and let's print some parts out for that. Filament sponsored by my local 3D printing supplier 3D print works. So this is all the parts we should need for our quick test because we're not actually going to be building the robot entirely, it's literally just a te te test platform and I've got the front geometry in here so that the robot will sit kind of at the right angle of these two things here are to approximate wheels and as you can see we're going to need to glue some of this together which is how the final design probably will go. I've also got a bunch of different arm lengths over here because these will give us different speeds out of the same gear ratio. So this is part of the thing that we're going to test is whether or not these new arms actually increase the sound out of the hammer. Having said that, before we get into any of this, A, we're going to need to glue some stuff together. These motor mounts in particular or the weapon mounts in particular need to be glued in place. But before we do any of that, we actually need some componentry out of the current version of Squeak. So, let's get some parts out of here. Now, we did lose a backplate in the last uh, set of fights, so we actually need to just remove some tape real quick, because that formed the backplate for the rumble, because we didn't actually need anything. There is no electronics back here, really, other than the motors. Uh, and I think maybe the Malinky, yeah, the Malinky is just visible in there, but it wasn't actually going to be hit by anything, theoretically. And it should be as simple as seven screws. We have the robot stripped down. I did lie, it was a few more than seven screws to get the whole thing back apart. Also, I'm glad I did this. Uh, the actual D shaft on the bottom of this weapon arm here is showing signs of rounding out already. Probably would have taken a couple more fights, but there wasn't that much left in this uh, actual hammer arm. So I've got an idea on how to fix that. I've got a test of that here, but we'll talk about that if it works. Uh, there's no point really talking about it until I know that it's actually going to behave at least a little bit better than just an ABS print does. Next, of course, we need the hammer. This is just hot glue. Uh, it should, and it is now old hot glue, so it should just peel away, given a little bit of force, because both these are ABS. Hot glue doesn't stick super well to ABS. It does stick, as you can see, but not crazy. With the hammer released and ready to go, it is time to glue parts of the chassis together. These are the uprights for the motor mount. They are actually, oh, sorry, for the weapon mount. And they're printed separately so that the layer lines are strong in the direction they need them to be. Eventually gonna take a screwdriver shaft like this, but for now we're just gonna run a bolt through it just because it's gonna be a little bit easier than having all of the mass of a screwdriver hanging off one side. I'm gonna do this all set up together so that when the glue dries, I know that the two motor mounts actually lock in the places they need to lock and that the bolt or the screwdriver is gonna go through totally fine and not give me any issues. But to do that, we're gonna to need to lock this guy down with some screws first. Oh 
Okay, time to glue, and this could be quite the experience. I kind of need to glue these at the same time. Although actually, I'm, what I might try and do is I might try and glue them separately because I'm just realizing this top one has a lot less play in its positioning than this one does. So I can probably actually take this bolt out of here and then glue them separately but use the bolt from the other side to align where the taller of the two motor mount sits, or the weapon mount sits. Hmm. Okay, so something's up with my CAD file here. You can see that those two are at different heights, just entirely. Which I think means that my CAD model for my motor mount is actually missing some millimeters or half a millimeter or something uh, that is being used as clamping force to hold the mount in place, which means that that is not an accurate reference point. And I do probably need to mount this some other way which actually shouldn't be that difficult to do. But for now, I am slightly curious, so I am gonna go ahead and finish this design up. Okay, we're set up and ready for some testing. However, first thing I notice immediately, the hammer is still not hitting the ground flat. It is hitting the ground at an angle. If we keep the base together and push it, it does go a little flat, but then it contacts with the gears here. So that is the full reach of the robot. And if there's something underneath it, uh, it's hitting them here, and in actual fact, I think I might even put Squeak's old chassis under the hammer for this particular test. A, because it's a little bit of a better representation of when we're hitting something, and B, because I don't actually want uh, these gears hitting these hammer holders for the moment. Uh, and then it does, it sits up, and then it sits back. Cool, oh, this is gonna get real jumpy throwing the hammer around. Anyway, that's what we're here to do. I have uh, safety glasses on. I am prepared and ready for this. Uh, so, hopefully, we can. <laughs> oh, I should have seen that coming. There's not enough weight in this flimsy, flimsy chassis for it to swing the hammer. Oh. Interesting. Might need to charge this battery. Half a second. So it wasn't the battery. I put a fresh, brand new battery in and it still does not work. So I think it's a combination of the gear ratio and the length of the arm. So we're gonna change this up. I have a new motor mount which will put the axle higher, which means that this should actually hit the ground flat this time, fingers crossed. Uh, and I've got a new gear which actually takes up that extra height and also changes our gear ratio again. Instead of being uh, two to one, we should have five to three this time. Okay, new gears and mounts are in place. So let's give this a shot. Hopefully the changed gearing here will actually help considerably. Yes! Oh, okay. That's interesting. That seems to be... I think it's to do with the placement of the gearing. Yeah, the hammer itself, you can see the hammer is moving left and right with the gearing stack up shifting. That's because the bolt isn't a tight fit in the gear, and also uh, the bolt is not so doubly supported, which means that it can wobble around a little bit. And apparently, that's too much for this. Uh, so I'm gonna manually do that, and then we will try. Okay, that's good. That little bit of extra speed has really helped here. Uh, and we can try this size gear with a slightly longer arm on it. That will give us a little bit more speed. But I think this is a good setup. I'm going to now recad this whole design to not be a test jig and we'll actually get 
a chassis going because any more testing we can do on the final chassis design. I just needed to know that I had something that would actually squeak when it hit the ground and we've got that now. I've got more testing to do because I printed these which are a one-to-one -one gear set but have a longer arm for the hammer to be on which will mean it will go a little bit faster. So this is actually somewhat of a gear ratio of its own right. However, I think the issue that we're having with the hammer arm wobbling around all over the place is going to continue. So I printed a whole new test platform, which is basically just a new chassis. And this time we'll be able to glue in the second mount and have everything line up so that there won't be this kind of crazy wild wobble uh, in the actual arm. And hopefully, it will work better. Yeah, we know that 50 to one works. That is what Squeak version one was running and it did just work. So I've jumped us ahead to the slightly longer arm and if this works and doesn't squeak properly, we might even try for an even longer arm on the same setup and see how we go. Or I might play with the arm geometry to try and get a flat hit on the table because I feel like that's one thing that's kind of not working for us right now. Uh, so let's try this. Okay, I'm feeling good about this, but not that. That front throw isn't great still. It certainly could be better on the forward hit. Actually, let's try put a chassis in the way and also readjust our um, screwdriver uh, and see what happens here. Oh, actually, it's a little bit better with a chassis in the way. Okay, no, it's not a little bit better with the chassis in the way. It really does feel like it needs to hit flat to actually get a squeak going. Okay, here we go again, even longer arm this time. Let's see what we get. Honestly, that's better. I think that is actually better. Uh, the one thing I want to try though, let's turn this off. I really, really want to try just taking this end squeaker off. Yes, that will mean that we won't get squeaks when we hit the ground in reverse, but it'll also lighten the load of the hammer a little bit and maybe mean that the whole thing will go a little bit faster because I still think it's like, it's taking a little while to speed up, which means it's probably not hitting the ground at max speed, which is probably meaning not getting full squeak out of it. Oh, ha. that was a hefty hit onto the table than I was expecting. Might have to put something else on there uh, to fix that, but here we go. Mm. Okay, that's interesting. It's making a louder sound just going thonk than it is doing the squeak. So, hmm. All right, let's speed round some of this a little bit because I understand that this is probably getting a little samey, but that is what iterative design is about. We are kind of iterating through things here and trying to work out what works and kind of home in on the thing that is going to work for us. So this is the one-to-one -one gear ratio on the output with 50 millimeter long arm and a 30 degree bend in the hammer holder, which I'm hoping will give us a better contact with the ground. And just by looking at it like this, I think it actually will. So let's see what we've got. Oh yeah, that is much better. Okay, I like that. Let's try the bend on a faster gear ratio. And here we go, back with the 30 to one gear ratio with a bend in the arm this time. It is a 30 centimeter long arm. This should be, ah, uh, that's right, of course. This was the setup that didn't really work for us. Let's just see if I can like, oh, it gives a good squeak, but I think there's just not enough torque. Ha, ah, it's such a good squeak, but there's just not the torque in the arm to um, 
get up off the ground here. See, we can't, I can't raise the arm back up, and if I put the arm all the way down, I can't get out from this position. So, uh, I want to go a little bit faster than 50, but... And finally, we're going to do a slightly faster, but not as fast as before, setup with the bent arm and see if this gives us something here. So... Ah! Yes! That is sounding a lot better. Like that squeak is actually pretty good. And I'm pretty happy with the speed I'm getting out of this arm too. I like it! And unlike with the smaller gearing ratio that we had before, the 3 to 5, uh, this is actually not getting caught anywhere, which is always a good thing to see. Because the other one, just every now and again it got caught, and that wasn't great. There we go. So there you go. This video uh, wasn't intended to be an exploration of the kind of iterative process that sometimes needs to happen to build an effective combat robot, but that is what we've ended up doing. Look at all of this iteration that happened over the course of this video, and look, sometimes this is what needs to happen. Uh, you just sit down and you puzzle something out and just try and keep trying until it works the way you want it to. I think we're good on the gear ratio and arm length now. I might add just a tiny little bit more bend into the arm just so that when an opponent is underneath we hit flat on the opponent rather than flat on the ground but I think that's something I can do off camera and that adjustment uh, I'm still a little bit skeptical about because opponents are kind of coming at different heights whereas if I whiff with the hammer it's always going to hit the ground so uh, maybe even if the whistles on the loud hammer are just a whiff detector uh, I think that will be fine and also quite funny. Adding an extra amount of angle to this will mean though that when the arm or when the hammer swings back that the hammer head misses the ground or hits at a steeper angle, meaning that we're not going to have the squeak on the back, probably meaning I can just remove this back section entirely and reduce the mass of the hammer, which will actually probably make it go faster again, giving us more squeak, hopefully, maybe. I don't I don't know yet. But I do have a trick up my sleeve too. Uh, I went out and bought a trick to go up my sleeve and that is this. Uh, so yes, we have a giant pile of loud hammers now. I've got another one of the same that I'm using already. Two of these little ones which also have recorders in them which is just terrifying. Uh, and then these two tiny little baby weenie ones. Which is hilarious. Um, and I might need to like build these into a pair of fleas or something as a cluster bot. I don't know, but they are very, very cool. Uh, and something will be done with them in the near future, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, I think that's going to be it for this video. I was intending to get to the final design for this robot today, but uh, the iteration took time. And again, that is a thing that can happen when you do this. Uh, and this is just part of the engineering process. So, yeah, we're going to leave it here. I will finish off this design. I've got a few minor tweaks to the chassis I want to make, just where and how everything mounts up, and just the chassis is a little bit flexible at the moment, so we'll fix all of those things, and it'll be ready for its next event. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed that one, and I will see you in the next video.